Hello, my name is Lauren and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the metronome and different techniques I like to use to get technical passages faster, gradually, using a metronome. And I'm gonna go over three different techniques I like to use in this video. But before I do that, I wanna make a really quick announcement. I do teach Skype lessons and for the month of September 2019, I wanna offer, um, if you wanna try Skype lessons out and you're interested in them, I'm going to be offering first two Skype lessons at half price if, you, if they are purchased in September. And so this is kind of a back to school <laughs> special. So if you're curious about them or want to give them a try, uh, then just know that your first two uh, will be half price if they are purchased in September. And then of course um, you can use them you know, within, <laughs> I guess I'll say like six months of the purchase date. So that's the special. And uh, yeah, so I just want to make that quick announcement. Let's get into the video now. So the first metronome game that I will introduce is called the penny game, where I take three pennies, or you could call this uh, the up three down two game. So I have a metronome here. Um, it's like both. I'm using up three down two with the, um, the penny game. Um, so the metronome has the, the traditional metronome markings 104, 108, 112, 116. It skips um, numbers, you know, the traditional markings on the metronome. This is what I like to use for my most of my practicing. There's another option where it's digital. So if I push these two, like the two tempo keys at the same time, I can get digital so I can get all the numbers. I don't really like using this option. So if you can find the traditional metronome markings, that's the one I like to use for the games I'm going to introduce, the, <laughs> the techniques I'm going to introduce. And yeah, uh, and I'll also, I also wanna say that I have a printable guide kind of an outline of the things I go over in this video, I'll include in the description below. It's going to talk about this stuff <laughs> because it's, you know, it's a lot of, it's almost like, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> rules to a game. And so I, I feel like I'm sharing um, a lot of, a lot of that in this video. So I have a printable guide and it'll also have the traditional metronome markings on it if that's confusing or you're not sure what those are. Okay, so up three, down two. I'll take an etude, maybe a page filled with 16th notes that I really wanna practice technically. And normally if I have a whole page of 16th notes and it's really technically challenging, I'll bracket with a pencil, I'll put bracket marks around different sections. I'll section it out so maybe one page will have eight different sections on it and I'll practice one section at a time. You can even start with the hardest, most challenging section if you want. Then I take a metronome and I put it slightly slower than I already can play the passage comfortably. So I have a random etude, Opus 13, no, Opus 30, Anderson etude number 24. And I'm just gonna play a passage out of it and let's say, my um, comfortable tempo is 66. We'll just say that. So I'll play a passage. And let's say I bracketed out two measures to be one section. I'll play it right now. So let's say that. So I played it once with good rhythm um, with the metronome and I got all the notes and the slurring was good. The articulation was good and it was So it was good. Whatever good is to you, whatever your goal is to achieve <laughs> I say good notes good rhythms even and proper articulations um, So I'll take a penny. I'll put it to the other side of the music stand I'll play it again if I do it well again I'll put the second penny to the other side of the music stand. 
And then I'll do it a third time, and if I play it well, I'll move the third penny over. So then, if I mess up in any one of those three tries, I'll move all the pennies back, and I'll maybe even slow the metronome down and start the process from a slower tempo. Because I should be able to play it three times comfortably if, if, I'm, uh, if that's a good tempo marking. So that's what you do. That's the game. And then, if I play it three times in a row really well, I'll move it up three. So if it was at, oh my gosh, this is the tuner. <laughs> if it was at 66, I'll move it up three. 69, 72, 76. I'll play it one time at 76, then down two to at 69. Three times at 69, up three. Play it one time at 80, then down two three times at 72, three times in a row with successfully, and so on and so forth. And you can have a goal for that day. You can write it, you can write down your goal on a chart. You can set a date for when you would like to achieve your desired tempo. Um, you can be really organized and methodical about it so you can actually track your progress and gradually get the tempo faster and see <laughs> the, the results and your progress. Another technique I want to introduce with, in combination with this penny game is that you can actually play at the slower tempo where you play it three times in a row. You can do different rhythms. You can do long, short, long, short, or short, long, short, long. So I'll play it at 72, whatever, as my slow tempo. And I'll do long, long, short, long, short, just changing the rhythm around. And then short long. So you can do little variations like that as well. And that can be a fun way to practice that with in combination with that um, metronome game. <laughs> so the second game I will introduce is much more loose and a game I actually like to use, or a technique I should say, I like to use much more often. It's probably my favorite one that I use the most. It's 50-50. I'm calling it the 50-50 metronome exercise. I'm not sure if, I'm sure there's a better name for it. But what I'll do is I will freestyle practice without a metronome. So it's like 50% with, 50% without. And I will set a timer. Maybe I'll set the timer for two minutes on my phone, which is in airplane mode so that I, no one distracts me while I'm practicing. <laughs> so it'll be two minutes and I'll pick a section. I'll pick the next two measures of this etude and I'll just practice them for two minutes. I will cut this part out of the video, but I'll just practice it for two minutes. Maybe I'll include some of it in the video, no metronome. So some of the things I could do in this two minutes is I could put fermatas on all the downbeats. I could put fermatas on every other downbeat. I could put rests randomly in between certain groups of sixteenth notes. Rest. <laughs> Rest. You could change the rhythm. And then the time's up already. So the last rhythm I was doing was long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long. You could do long, short, 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 long. You could do short, long, short, short, long. I mean, you could do lo short, long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. You can do so many things to kind of get your fingers moving without actually necessarily being all that comfortable with it all up to tempo. After that two minutes, I'll put it up to tempo on the metronome. And I can do all the same things. I can hold fermatas, I can take rests while I play it up to tempo, but I'm just kind of seeing where the tempo is to see. Or if I feel ready, I can play it all the two measures straight the way it's written and see if I can do that. So it's a little tiny.
tiny bit uneven <laughs> but it's there and you know you can do that and then go back and then play it for uh, another two minutes. What I like to do after I play something fast or up to tempo is I like to actually play it at half tempo. I like to play it really slow, go back to playing it really, really slow. So I like doing that after I play something fast and I'm not super familiar with it, um, I'll go back and play at half tempo just because I think it's good to stay, have a bit of both. It's really good to reinforce the slow, clean playing and reinforce the fingerings and then go back and see if you can do it and you know at a fast tempo. So you're kind of taking that control with you from the slower tempo. So I like that. Um, approach and then the third metronome exercise I will introduce I will call it one two three four notes per beat so if it's a, a bunch of sixteenth notes where there's four sixteenth notes in each beat you can use this technique I personally like this metronome technique for those passages where you have to play ten or thirteen notes in one beat I like doing this technique for that, especially if it's a contemporary, crazy, random notes kind of thing. I like using this method for those kinds of passages, but you can definitely do it for 16th notes. So just four notes to a beat and do one, two, three, then four notes in a beat. So let me pick another section here. I'll pick this one. One note per beat. then I'll do three, which is a little bit of a, <laughs> a challenge sometimes because it's a little offset. So yeah, that's three and then four. So, so on and so forth. And, you know, if, if three and four is too challenging, no one's making you keep that tempo. You can always slow it down 10 or 20 notches. You can turn it from 100 back down to 80 if that's better for you with this exercise. You don't have to do it up to tempo. You do it at whatever tempo you want and track your progress and keep track of, of the top tempo you achieve each day. So that's the other one. And I think those are the three main exercises that I like to use that I wanted to introduce in this video. So yeah, the first one I used a lot when I was in high school, wasn't as familiar with my scales and arpeggios and I felt like I needed to spend more time and be a little bit more tedious with the an etude I was learning. So I would use that a lot and I would still use that now sometimes if I'm learning a really fast contemporary piece with a lot of random notes that I would need to do more tedious work with. So I like that for the first metronome exercise and the last two I just like using them freestyle as I need them and I can use those if I'm wanting to learn something a little bit more quickly or I have a short amount of time to learn a piece and that just feels like an efficient way to learn it. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like the video if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more tutorial videos like this one. And again, uh, Skype lessons, um, if you're new, you want to try them out, month of September, they are first two Skype lessons, half price if purchased in September and you want to give them a try. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs> Bye.